Hello, Destinites, and welcome to a discussion of the newly released Sparrow Racing in Destiny, something very popular. Everybody talks about how everybody talks about that we talked about this. Uh, everybody was really, really interested in having these races, and I'm going to break down kind of the essential guide of everything that you need to know about them, might want to know about them, as well as offer my own opinion on the structure of this in terms of microtransactions, in terms of the impact on them having it for a limited period of time, all these different things I'm going to touch on in the course of this video. But first I wanted to get, because it is an essential guide, all the details uh, and remove my opinion until the end. So let's just uh, get into the details of it. So you've got two people that you're going to visit for this. First, I should say that the event is going to run from the 8th of December to the 29th, so it is currently active. It's started up now, and the form of the race is a six-player uh, free-for-all. So that, with that out of the way, let's talk. Uh, let's get into the uh, the vendor details that we have. So we've got the two vendors that are involved with it. We've got Tess Everest as well as Amata Holiday, the shipwright. So if you played at all, the shipwright is the character that is just adjacent to the Vanguard vendor. Uh, which is just, uh, you know, between Vanguard Venter and Future War Cult. That's where Amata is. So Amata, it's interesting. I think it's kind of cool. They didn't just open this up with that you would start racing immediately. There's a quest. So you get your license, um, you get your bounties, and you get your quest from Amata ship, right? And you get a new sparrow as a part of the quest. So that's really cool right there. And you get bounties from her as well. So something that you should know is you're accumulating. You you accumulate just like you might in the Iron Banner rep, reputation uh, in this event. And higher rep, of course, means higher rewards or better drops that you're going to get from the event. And it's interesting. As much as I found, inf well, here I can I can assume this that your rep is probably going to be based on how you are going to finish in the race. Uh, I'll touch on race deals details a little bit later, you know, later uh, tips and tricks for going around the track and stuff like that. Um, but we're going nitty gritty right now. Okay, so higher rep, higher uh, be better drops that you're going to get. Um, in addition to this, look, this is amazing. This amazes me that they're doing this when you consider how hard it is to find uh, items of this quality in the game right now. Is you can get helmets and class items are going to come. And you can get items that are up to 320 light. So that is of the maximum light that's available in the game right now. So that's pretty exciting. A game like this is so accessible where it's a uh, free-for-all as opposed to trying and organize a group of six uh, to be able to do, you know, uh, something like Oryx do the uh, King's Fall raid. Um, also interesting to me as well is that those other things are incumbent or require you to have a higher level of light where I'm wondering if this is something that was not yet made clear, if higher light levels will maybe change the way that you can run into people, because I know I'm getting too much into the details of the racing. Anyways, I'm speculating, speculating. Okay, so we were there, we moved our way through there. You get the license, you get your quest and bounties from Amata, higher rep equals better drops. Drops are capable of coming down of 320. Um, so, and they'll also, you can get items that will have specific racing perks, but don't have light associated with them. So yeah, just for racing. You can also do tricks, which I think is kind of cool. I don't know if tricks are going to result in another speed boost for you, for you but you can do, uh, you can do tricks. Tess, our wonderful little microtransaction machine there. She's going to have a bunch of, uh, things for you. She's going to have new emotes. Uh, she's going to have different style sparrows, but of equal speeds, so she's not affecting the meta, just cosmetic changes. She's going to have, I think this is showing a good sense of humor from Bungie, uh, she's going to have horns to signal your approach. And I was like, horns, what the hell does she mean? And it's literally just like a car. So you can get different horn sounds that you can be going along and somebody behind you will hear your horn as you're coming through, you know, to pass them which I think is hilarious. They've got a good sense of humor to have that included. Uh, from Tess as well, you can get a record book. Um, it's to provide challenge and further reward. Um, you can also get from her an exclusive emblem and shader. Um, so, yeah, spirit, okay, here's a detail about that book I just mentioned, this record book. So, like I said, there are items that you're going to get from her that are specific to racing. Now, if you were for the Festival of the Lost or whatever they had for the October thing, there was a means by which you went about getting those cool masks from Halloween that made them permanent. 
this record book that you can get from her is the way that you're going to make some of these race only items permanent so you can it says you can infuse them and they can be kept for later so there there you go that that's kind of that's kind of interesting so this record book is going to keep information from your challenges um, I'm not sure if from the record book that you'll receive additional rewards because you already have the bounties, but, you know, we'll figure that out as we play more. I'll probably do a part two of this once we've been uh, playing for a week or so uh, to talk about, you know, now that we've played, what else do we know about it? But this is just as much as I know on the, uh, the day of release. Uh, so now that we've moved through the two vendors, I want to talk about the details of the racing itself, and then I'm going to offer my opinion on this whole thing in general, this whole bonanza. So, uh, so what's the racing going to be like because you have equal speed sparrows? How's that going to work? So what they're doing is they're adding in speed boosts. Speed boosts in the form of gates. Now the way that the gates will work is just like as though you were slalom skiing. And how it's going to work is that the person in the lead can still get these gates to boost their speed. But the further and further you are in the lead, the narrower these gates are going to be. So obviously that's uh, more of a disadvantage to the person in the lead to stay in the lead. And, you know, vice versa, those further back in the pack are going to have gates that are super wide so that they can stay competitive with those in the front and all else is not lost. Uh, so that's one way that you're going to directly affect how it is that you're, you're playing against each other, how you're competing when your Sparrow itself at its base speed is the same. Now, what else do we got there? So what else is going to change the, uh, the game as we race? Where are we going to get our advantages from? So something else that you're going to get advantages from are just like the complexity of the track, like your skill in terms of your maneuverability, even if you're going the same speed, how do you move through the track? But there's actually combatants mixed in as well. I believe it's Mars and Venus, so it'll probably be something like Vex and Cabal that we're going uh, between. But they'll probably shoot at you, and you'll have these uh, you know, areas that uh, will be dangerous to run through and will blow up your Sparrow if you're racing. Um, in addition to that, you'll have things that are kind of like... Uh, you know if you were to go to mini-golf, and you would have like that shot where you have to do it and it's going up a ramp but there's this area that opens and closes you're gonna have timing parts of the race like that where a fan might be going around and you need to sneak in between the blades and then if you're going against somebody you know you could bump them into the blade so that they're going to explode uh, so those are kind of the things that affect the speed of your ship can be affected these combatants can shoot at you uh, there's these obstacles in the course that are going to make it more difficult. So we've gone through that. We got we got this crazy loot you can get. We got this new sparrow that you're getting, which is really cool. We got tests here um, that allows you to um, infuse some of these racing items to stay around. I should say, well, these item, I, items, items that are specific to the racing, they have a real racing look. They're really sleek. And I, th I think that's really cool that it's it's not like Destiny, you know, fighting gear, it's racing gear. So they've thought of that as well while they've gone through the process. Um, but now, here's what I want to talk about. There's um, People would say that this is kind of a micro trans. I want to talk about my opinion of this, this event in general. You know, what does it mean that it's a limited time event? What is it, you know, this, that, and the other thing? And I think, in my opinion, it's wholly good. Microtransactions, as far as I'm going to be concerned, as far as I follow this game along and play it, as long as they keep it cosmetic and outside of actually impacting the course of the game for its skill level, I don't mind so much. And yeah, you could say that they're making tons of money, but why not make a little bit more money? We all need to, you know, everybody's got to make a living. And you want companies, when I'm enjoying this game so much already, I don't mind if they have a little bit more money. Make me more content that I enjoy. I, for one, am having fun when I play the game, and if they don't affect the meta, then I don't mind if they have these microtransactions. I can still compete in these races. I can still get the 320 drops that are going to let me enjoy everything else just the same. So I don't really mind these microtransactions at all, and you don't have to opt in. If you do, you're that much more hardcore. Whatever. There's going to be this whole slew of other stuff just as cool that you can infuse and you can keep. And I think that, that that's pretty cool. The other thing that I see coming under fire from people uh, is it's like, oh man, now they finally give us what we want, but it's going to be only for a limited time, 8th to the 29th. I see this actually call me crazy. I actually see this as somewhat of a, a good thing. Just like the Iron Banner, just like having Trials of Osiris on the weekend, 
I like when they enter these things into the game and then remove them because just like anything that we have for too long, we, we grow bored with it and each time they remove it, they get a chance to like really reinvent it, really improve it and bring it back to us fresh. It's just like each time I see the Iron Banner show up, I'm excited that there's all these new rank 5 items that I'm going to get and it's not just that that style of gameplay gets old. It's all these to keep a player interested when ultimately you just max out on whatever it is that they're going to offer you. It's, ta it's like creating things, introducing new things, removing old things. It's not being in a static environment that keeps a game interesting and I think when you add and remove these components that you, you keep that going. And as well, you know, notice as well that, yeah, the event's going away, but you're going to keep some of these infused items. I think it might be the case that we'll see this again, like we would see the Iron Banner again and again. And then those people who have infused those items, uh, not necessarily the emotes or something that were actually bought, but infused items, will likely still be usable then in the next Sparrow Racing. And so it won't be entirely useless. And if you want that extra, oh, I was there from the first round of Sparrow Racing, you can, you can show that off with the items that you have. So I think it's wholly a good thing. Uh, you know, when I was, I didn't even know that this was coming out. I was surprised by this to hear it. You know, I only found out recently everybody was talking about it. Uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's wonderful and I think the way that they've handled it is really, really cool. It's giving people a chance for people who don't get into those bigger groups, a chance for really, really high level light items, which keeps it really exciting. Um, it's giving you a new unique form of play and it's something that we might see in the future as well. So I think it's going to be awesome. I'm really, really excited for it and I hope to see you guys in the races. So please, if you enjoy this, uh, do like, subscribe, follow, share, all that good stuff. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm always uh, tweeting out the newest videos that I upload. Uh, if you want to follow my Twitch stream, it's available there as well on the channel. I have it up as a shortcut. Uh, yeah, and thanks for checking the video out. I'm going to be doing a uh, discussion of the year one exotics that will be returning uh, soon. If not already, I'm not sure exactly when the December patch comes out. And then I'll be releasing another video in short order of the changes of class balance, which is really significant because I think we've all become sick of getting hammered in the face by the, uh, the Titan. All right, thanks for checking the video out. This is The Great Owl signing off for now. Peace. Thank you.